morning, everyone. I want to read a short little piece of Psalm 89. It's chapter, yeah, chapter 89, verse 15. I thought this was really cool. This is the Passion Translation. And it says, the happiest people on earth are those who worship you with songs, exclamation point. They firmly march along, shouting with joy and shining in the radiance streaming from your face. We can do nothing but leap for joy all day long, for we know who you are and what you do. How many of you know he's good? Do you know him? Like, it's my heart's cries to know him more and just to see his goodness. And um, anyway, I just want to invite you right now to just celebrate him and, and worship with us as we go after him and after his presence. Just um, thank you, God, for being here. Thank you, God, that we're the happiest people on the planet. <laughs> We love to worship you. So we thank you for being here today. We love you. Just stand with us and worship with us. Who makes the power of sin and darkness? His love is mighty, so much stronger. King of glory. King above all kings Shakes the whole earth The holy thunder And leaves us breathless And all in wonder King of glory King above all kings Sing out this amazing This is amazing grace this is unfailing love that you would take my place, that you would bear my cross, you would lay down your life, that I would be set free. Yeah. Jesus, I sing for all that you've done. Sing for all 
the grave. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Worthy is the King who conquered the grave. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Worthy is the King who conquered the grave. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain.
when they were singing. And I don't know how everybody else's mind works. I just know how mine works, and I only know how it works part of the time. <laughs> but I really felt that there's a, there was a scripture verse coming so strong in my heart, and I told Ryan, I said, hand me my Bible. And, and it's, it's Habakkuk, and I knew it was Habakkuk. I just wasn't sure if it was 3 and 2 or 2 and 3. It's 3 and 2. He says, oh, Lord, I've heard your speech, and I was afraid. Why? Because the voice of the Lord permeated him so deep that it caused him to tremble. But listen to what he says. He says, O oh Lord, revive your work in the midst of the years. In the midst of the years, make known. In wrath, remember mercy. Now, what I want to tell you is this, and the reason that verse just really gripped my heart, because as Pam's saying in revival, we want to see your kingdom come. Revival. He's saying, Lord, I heard your speech. I heard your voice. I, I heard you speak. And it caused me to tremble inside of me because I realized, God, that you are, you are bringing something to life on the earth in a way that it's never been before. Revive your work in the midst of the years. Revive your work, God. Bring, bring the fullness of all that you want to do. When we're singing, Lord, let your kingdom come, we're literally saying, God, do what you have always wanted to do on the earth. Do you understand that when, when God creates Adam in the garden, he's created a perfect work, but sin came, and out of that, the, the, the fall of Adam came. Men were no longer born into Christ. They were born into Adam. And because of the fall of Adam, they were every descendant after him was born into Adam. That's why Jesus said, you must be what? Born again, right? You're born into Adam, and you have an Adamic nature. You'd be born again so you can have the nature of Christ. Revive your work in the midst of the years, right? Do what you've always wanted to do. Lord, I've heard your speech and I was afraid. It gripped me in such a place because I knew that you were wanting to do something right now. I feel like God is wanting to, this is a time of birthing. I just feel like, I feel like the Lord is really speaking about this being a time of birthing right now. Where God's wanting to birth something fresh in your life. Something new in your, something that wasn't there yesterday but can be tomorrow because God touches you today. And I feel like that's something that's special. And maybe there's significance in your life right now. But as we continue in a place of worship this morning, I just feel like we just need to go ahead and worship. I, I don't want to go through a song service. I, I don't want to, I, I want us to really get intentional about just worshiping. Here's what I feel, and I'm just going to tell you this. I feel like God's wanting to birth something right now. And it, it might be that God's birthing books or videos or, 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 or albums or whatever. It might be that God's birthing a ministry in your life. God's birthing, but you feel the... Can I say this? When a woman's about to give birth, she is not dignified. <laughs> I've been there. I've been there with several. They're, they are not dignified in that place. They are like... Aah! Why? Because there's something that's coming. And you feel that. You feel the... If I can say this, the birth pangs in your, in, in your canal, if you would... I'm going to challenge you. We're going to do a couple more worship songs. I, I don't know where they're going. It's fine. I know we had an, it ended out amazing in the first service, but I'm just going to share this with you. If you feel like there's something that God is birthing, listen to these words. Revive your work in the midst of the years. Then when he says this, in the midst of the years, make known. Why did he say that? He's saying, not only make it known to me, make it known. Right? Can I say this? When God's anointing's on your life, you don't have to tell somebody. Oh, I, oh come on. You don't have to walk around saying, I'm anointed, I'm anointed, I'm anointed of God. When the God's anointing's on your life, he'll make his anointing known. Oh, I'm challenging you, man. As we continue in worship, if you feel the pangs of birth, you feel like God is birthing something, your cry is, God, revive your work in the midst of the years, in the midst of the years, make known. I'm going to invite you. During this time, you can just make your way to the front and begin to worship here. You might say, well, I'm not comfortable worshiping in the front. It's not comfortable giving birth. I've never seen anyone comfortably have a baby, right? Unless you had a C-section, but that's a whole nother message, okay? I'm going to challenge you. If there's something you feel like God is doing in your life right now, and you're saying, God, I want this, I'm going to invite you. Worship radically. Worship passionately. If, you've, if, you, if you feel that impression, come to the front and just go after God. And don't worry about what everybody else thinks. Can I tell you something? My wife had two children. I was there both times. She did not care what anyone else thought. 
she was not worried about what the nurse thought about her. She, I'm her husband. It was my baby too. She didn't care what I thought. She, matter of fact, she threw me out twice. That's a whole other thing. Okay, but but I'm excited because I feel like God is birthing something right now. This is a time. I'm telling you, it's prophetic. There's something being birthed right now in the atmosphere. So as they begin to worship, you want to make your way. You want to make your way now, whatever. But I hear God in this really clear. So I'm just going to challenge you. Make your way. Let's go after him. Okay? Go ahead, guys.
lifted up, be high and lifted up, be high and lifted up. Be high and lifted. Let's sing out hallelujah. And hallelujah. And hallelujah. And you are worthy of all our praise. One more time. Sing hallelujah. And hallelujah. And hallelujah. And you are worthy yeah, of all our Just put your hands on your heart right now, both of them. God, I pray right now that in this time, Lord, our hearts will look like yours. God, I pray that we will have your heart, God, and that we will have your eyes to pour out your love, God, upon the people around us, Lord. I pray right now, God, that whatever you're working in the deep parts of everyone that's in this place, God, I thank you that it's rising and the earth is going to see it. Father, I pray right now that you stir up the hearts of the people who are in this place today, God. May we have a love, God, that burns for you. Guys, mean this, man, because this is so important. God, may we have a heart that burns for you. May we have holy heartburn. May our heart, God, look like yours, God, because you are refining our hearts to look like yours through your fire, God. You're an all-consuming fire. Consume our hearts, God. And may our hearts, God, look like yours. God, may we have the eyes to see people the way you see them. But Father, I pray that we have a heart to work with people and to pour into people like you do, God, so well. God, I pray right now for your heart, God, to look and to just saturate us, God, right now. God, may we have fire in our eyes and fire in our hearts because we see the fire that's in your eyes and we see the fire that's in our, your heart, God. And God, may our heart and our eyes just reflect what we gaze upon and that's your heart and that's your eyes, God. May our eyes reflect the fire that's in your eyes and may our hearts reflect the fire that's in your heart, God. 
And Father, I pray right now that you are bringing a unity and love together, Father God, a cord that can't be broken because, Lord, it's a three-strand cord that's not easily broken. And Lord, I pray for there to be such a unity, Father, across this body and across the body of, of Christ, Lord, like never before. God, I pray right now that you burn our hearts, God, with what burns your heart, God. And Father, I pray, God, that we wouldn't get weary in releasing your heart, but God, that we would be weary if we tried to hold your heart back. Jeremiah said it was like fire shut up in his bones. And it says that he got weary in trying to hold it back. God, may we not get weary or burned out in releasing your heart, God. May we find rest in your heart. And may the product of just resting in your heart be a lifestyle lived before people, Lord, that turn people to you because they see the goodness of you in our hearts, God, and in our lives. God, may we look like you. May we stand like Jesus said and say, if you've seen me, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Father, I pray, God, right now that we're one with you and that we may be one with one another, Lord. Burning hearts, burning ones, a culture of burning ones, Lord that passionately pursue you and go after you and show your love wherever we go despite persecution or what people may say. God, I pray right now that you stir your people up. Guys, this is what I keep hearing. Just keep your hands on your heart. This is what I hear. And please, man, I know God loves revival and he wants revival. But when you seek him, revival is a product of you seeking him. And the Lord spoke to me last night and I released it and I need to release it right now. I'm not just trying to piggyback off of what I said last night because I don't have anything else to say. This is where God is like focusing me on right now. I was, I had my son and we're walking in the church and I, and God said, you want revival, but I want intimacy. And I was like, God, what? He says, you want revival, which is awesome, but that's a product that is produced through the places of intimacy. And before you get to the heart of worship and live out what you see, you need to see it. So seek me, son. Revival will come when you seek me. Revival will come when you burn for me. Revival will come when your heart, guys, is transformed in the image of his heart because you seek his heart every day. He's bringing the church to the heart of intimacy. Yes, revival God wants to bring, and we've been proclaiming and declaring that, and I believe there's no brighter and and, and more ripe of a season than now for revival, but it's because we've hungered and thirsted for the Lord and went after him in a place of intimacy, and he is revealing his heart to the church, and in that place, our heart can't remain the same. We start desiring what he desires, and yes, revival is a desire, but it comes, and you have a deeper passion for revival and other things that pertain to God when you fall in a place of intimacy with him. And for some, you think, well, we get that. We need to have intimacy with God. Move on to another subject. I don't know why, but it's on the Father's heart for us to go into a deeper place of intimacy. Revival will come, but are we gonna come to the place that God has prepared for us in intimacy? So Father, stir our hearts with what stirs yours. And may we come into that place of intimacy with you. May we come to that place of intimacy with you because you love us. Guys, perfect love casts out fear. So God, I pray that you perfect everyone in this place in the revelation of your love, God. When there's an abundance of fear, there's a lack of a revelation concerning God's love. So God, I pray that you burn in the hearts of everyone who's in this place a revelation of your love for them. Guys, there's a depth a depth to God's love that we have not tapped into. We are tapping into it, but we have it fully. Fear is present because we need to grab a hold of that deeper revelation of God's love. So Father, I pray that you reveal us and just like it was spoken, God, your love will lead us through. Your love will lead us through. Before Chucky was saying what she was saying, I heard in my spirit about God just saying this is a piercing moment for a lot of us. And I seen a spear and I seen us like just hitting something and just this unleash of amazing things. Your worship, your prayer life, your time with God releases that. So Father, we thank you for stirring our hearts with what stirs yours. We're gonna go into that song, Let It Rain, again before we go any further. But before we do that, guys, know this. It's not by happenstance that the East Coast has been receiving such a downpour of rain. 
That's a natural expression of what's happening in the supernatural. And God is releasing a rain upon his people that will empower us to go beyond. That will empower us in his love. It will empower us to go beyond the limits that we've set for ourselves. And some of you need to know that it ain't over. It's not over. A lot of you are going to be and are today stepping over what you thought was over. Can you give your neighbor a high five really quick and say, neighbor, you are stepping over what you thought was over. You are stepping over what you thought was over. Watch this. When you stare at those walls, guys, or the stone rolled away or rolled in front of the tomb, that isn't the sign of it being over. That's a sign. That's an expression of it's just the beginning. The walls are falling, guys, and I really believe God is bringing the walls down today, and we are stepping over what we thought was over, and we are stepping over what we, the limitations we've set for ourselves, and we are entering in for his glory to come like never before. God, show us what that looks like. And God says, just like PA is prepared for the summer season, God says there's such an outpouring of his love right now in this season that's preparing you for the next season, not where you're looking for something to set the agenda. You're going to be as the body of Christ, the ones that are setting the agenda because you're full of him. God, let us be okay with being full of it. Full of it, God. Lift up your hands. Let's pray into that. And we're going to say, let it rain one more time. But Father, I pray that we're okay with being full of it. I want to be full of it. I want to be full of the it that I need. I want to be full of your love, God. I want to be full of who you are. I want to be full of it. So God, fill us, God, so we can be full of it, whatever that it is. And God, I thank you that you're filling your body up, God, and you're releasing your reign, God, upon your people to empower your people in your love to step over the limits they've set for themselves. Guys, today is such a breaking point. It's an access point. It's a breaking point as well. And God says, this is your breakthrough day. Well, we're not shouting and dancing and running around the church. Can I tell you something? Holy Spirit is far more than you just running around the church. Holy Spirit right now, as he's releasing his presence, is empowering you because it's impossible to seek God and not be empowered. So Holy Spirit, I pray you come and that you flood on your people right now so that we can say we're full of it. (laughs) Because out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks God. May we start calling those things to be as though they are because they're full in us. In Jesus' name. Can we sing that one more time? Let it rain. Come on. Let it rain. Let it rain. Don't be the floodgates of heaven. Let it rain. Let it rain. Open the floodgates of felt in my spirit that there's been so much talk about revival this morning and I just really feel that God wants us to get to a place where we trust him and that we know that he is nothing but good once we get to that place it'll just unlock a life of freedom sing out this last song. Oh, you are good, good. Oh, you are good, good. Oh, you are good, good. Oh, you are good, good.
Let's give God a round of honor. Father, we thank you. God, you're a good, good daddy. It's just who you are. It's just who you are, God. Thank you, God, for being so good. Thank you, God, for being so good. In Jesus' name. And the church said, amen. amen. Guys, we are super excited that you are all here this, this, this morning. I almost said this evening. But uh, we are so happy to to have you here, guys, and, and, and I've been in the first service. Pastor Don has an amazing message, so I'm not going to belabor too much. But, uh, man, there is a lot going on in the church, so you want to celebrate it by reading your bulletin. There's a lot going in your church, and the way you can celebrate it is reading your bulletin. But there is a few things that I just want to highlight really quick is this Wednesday night, starting at 6 p.m., we're actually going to be having Tom Stamen in the house. He's going to come, and he's going to bring his heart. He's a very strong, prophetic voice, and uh, he's going to come and just bring an awesome word for this church and for this region. And it's just going to be a good time. Service will start at 6 with some worship, and then we're just going to release Tom to just do what he does, and that's just bring Jesus. We've had him here one other time, and uh, Pastor loves him, and uh, I'm excited to hear him because I didn't get to hear him the, fir uh, the first time. Uh, also, guys, really quick, we have this coming up, and I'm super excited as well. You know Pastor Don doesn't give up his pulpit a lot, and when he does, the person must be really important and significant, right? So uh, David Wagner, next Sunday morning at the 9.15 and 11.15, uh, David Wagner is going to be in the house. How many of you heard him at our All In conference? Uh, uh, come on, he was absolutely amazing, and man, he's got such a strong prophetic voice and knows the heart of the Father and communicates it so well. Uh, I don't covet what I have in covenant, but I, could, I wish I could preach like he preaches and prophesy like he prophesies. <laughs> but he is an amazing man of God. He's going to be with us the 9-15, 11-15 service. And then Pastor Don has him coming Monday night and Tuesday night. And the services are going to start at 6.30 p.m. so that we can uh, have a great time in the Lord but not be home you know, too late you know, depending on what God does, but we won't be home too late so you guys can get your kids off to bed and all that kind of good stuff because uh, we know we, they have school uh, in the morning those two nights, but you do not want to miss this. And you shouldn't have enemies, but invite your enemies, invite your friends, invite your family members. It's going to be an awesome time uh, in the Lord. Susan Sasek is not here. She's actually over at the Texas Roadhouse right now. 11 to 9, she's doing a fundraiser. And, um, man, I just want to celebrate her. So if you guys had lunch plans to go somewhere else other than Texas Roadhouse, change your plans and go to the Texas Roadhouse, A, because their food is awesome, and eat their biscuits for me. Or not their biscuits, but their buns and their butter. It's really good. It's probably the best thing of the whole trip. I fill up on that before my steak comes. And I love steak, but it's probably the best thing that you could eat there is just their, their buns. But uh, anyways, 10% um, of your meal, pr the price of your meal will actually...